what's happening, folks. Good morning. Всем доброе утро. Welcome to Bad Nixon channel. We are in beautiful Pacific Northwest Cascades. Doing a little winter camping. I figured I'd do a little run over on the Q build, which has so far been coming out very, very uniquely and uh, comfortable and creative and everything else. There's a little hood leveling modification. I'm thinking I'm gonna pattern that. So I'm at about five PSI in the tires. For those who don't believe, you can try yourself. One thing for sure, I'm gonna go right away into the following up on the front skin plates. Those are very, very much needed. I didn't really feel comfortable about having all that stuff exposed in the front. But this is what five PSI looks like. No, you do not lose the bead. You will not lose the bead if you know how to drive. Well, that's very important. Um, and 5 PSI gives you great flotation. These 33, 12, 5, 15 are awesome. Considering the weight of the vehicle. So they give you a nice, nice footprint. Diesel heater going into the rooftop tent. This is just a Chinese one that I made a few back, a few, uh, few years back. I think I'm one of the, I think I'm one of the first ones. Anyways, except some guys in Europe, they use the Webasto or the S-Bars. But I believe my unit is one of the first China, China made heater units. So this is a diesel heater. So just to give you an idea, this tank I brought in full. It's about halfway full now. This ran me for two nights on low heat setting. Solar panel that I put in. And it's uh, putting out right now, just a little bit considering it's cloudy and all. So I need to crank the stuff on the back. Uh-huh lights pretty basic light package rear kitchen swing out water fuel propane and I'm gonna drop down to five pounder chainsaw holder bracket mount whatever you want to call it I milled it out of HDPE very nice it makes it easily accessible to a chain it is secured by that because every chain bar from all the tire part, you guys will know that it has a hole in it. So build a hole in the same spot, boom, there you go. And I don't think it's a problem on the trail. Because on the trail, I actually, we had to uh, cut through a few trees on the way. And I ended up just basically, just keeping the chainsaw just like that without anything else other than this guy. I did a little safety chain link for it. This is enough for it to hold it down. Uh, while I'm on the highway, all the vibes, winds and whatever, I just simply put this bungee cord over it and it does the job just fine. So very functional on the rear bumper. Your propane feeds right into your stove over here. The controller is 30 PSI for those who are wondering. I have it opened only up to 15. Because if you open it to 30, there's going to be so much pressure that the, the burners are just going crazy. I mean, they're just, that's a lot because I don't think burners need that much. But this is a quick disconnect. So we got a couple of pods going on here. Quick disconnect, 20,000 BTU burners on this Everest camshaft. Very nice stove. If you haven't seen it, um, check out the other videos on my channel. You'll see the layout of the drawer system possibly better. Uh, but this is basic idea behind the drawer system is that the bottom one is where the stove is The top drawer is your pantry drawer so All your stuff in here countertop fold down on a coffee table hinges Then you have the perfect level top area to put your stuff or uh, Just use it as a, again countertop space fridge in here currently not being used 
battery after three days of dry camping is a tool, still a 12 one even used considering that I'm running the diesel heater uh, every night. Fridge is off. Costa, Costa. So teapot is boiling, that's nice. Uh, fridge not being used as a fridge right now, basically as a cooler because it is cold enough outside, you don't have to worry about it. So let's see, lights here, very convenient for the night. Gives you plenty of light, I mean, enough to, to shine everywhere where you need to as far as cooking area and all. <coughs> we boost antenna, that's how I have it wired up. So I have it basically on a, on a need to use basis. I don't have it wired up all the way with ignition all the time. This, I don't want to have to worry about turning ignition on or off or whatever and uh, on a long stretches on the road if I need to I just turn it on and go for it shallow mount whatever treasure very useful thing you can keep your snowshoes in there or any other stuff in there like uh, fuel for a chainsaw whatever mark your treasures and do you know why <laughs> because they get stolen so i figured i'm gonna put it like this stolen from nixon overland let's see mole panels those are awesome i do sell them direct message me via any social media same uh same name bud nixon on social media anywhere on instagram whatever or find me through nixon overland just like it says here um, on Facebook. So, back section, nothing much, nothing crazy. These go actually back there. I still haven't found a way to mount them, but I don't carry them all the time, so that's why I'm just kind of like, whatever with that. Um, anything that you see here that is obviously not sold in stores or online anywhere, I do make it myself. Like a lot of this stuff, custom built, in-house. My own rem mount. I did a hand, handheld ham and I made it into stationary. Run the wire for the antenna, then exterior antenna there. I snipped the power wire, I run it back here, wired it up, and then the speaker mic here just goes this way. For purposes of showing it to others, I have it disconnected obviously, but. Um, anyways, uh, that wraps it up about it. So I've been blabbering out eight minutes. Uh, one thing on solar panel, really happy how it came out. I wasn't expecting it to doing to be doing this kind of work, but it's a hundred watt. I think it was like a couple of hundred bucks on Amazon, flat. The brand is that. Feel free to search, find out. I want to shout out to Oxbeam for some of the lighting they provided. And I'm using Oxbeam's switch panel. And you can see the controller right there. Oh, I'm not sure if it's going through. Maybe like that. There it goes. So that's the switch controller. And my switches are all right here. And I have to say, it's uh, so S Pod and uh, Switch Pros, two other brands that are you know high end, but they're priced. Uh, you know, you're talking about almost thousand dollars. Definitely good brands. I have installed them on multiple custom rigs uh, for myself. I figured I'd give it a try for X Beam just to see the difference. So there's just less options of as far as how lights are being controlled uh, because basically X Beam's panel is more or less like I'm gonna count it as an on off function only pretty much with s pod and switch pro stuff um, you're able to do momentaries well you can do momentary here too uh, but you're able to do momentary you're able to do dimmer you're able to do strobe flash and such so there's just a lot more options but i don't know if it's uh, cost feasible in my point of view anyways so for this build i'm calling it the budget build so i'm not doing anything crazy with you know very expensive lighting or very expensive parts or whatever 
uh, or high-end high -end brands. This is gonna be the highest end brand here is myself. So, CVT rooftop tent, very convenient. Stays nice and warm with a diesel heater. No, it's not a problem that the exhaust is here. A lot of people ask. Uh, I mean, if you're raining and storming, uh, you might have issues of, you know, elements getting in. But in my case, so this thing is closed up. That's the reason I went into the hard shell case like this versus the the one that they usually sell with is a metal case. And then metal case is waterproof too, to a point. Uh, but in my case, I wanted to go somewhere heavy duty at the same time it was a project and at the same time i want to have it more storage inside the box for the reason that i want to keep it outside so like to keep the holes in here or any kind of strap or any kind of extra things that i want to keep so simply modified box cut out the openings i uh, cut and bend my own aluminum so I made the enclosure enclosings in there um no for three or four seasons now that i'm using this i do not put air filter on the burner chamber i just don't uh, i do have an inline filter right there which is usually not part of the package um so overall i mean overall i'm happy i think my water pot boiled in here Yep. Look at that going crazy. Uh, so other than that, let's see. Rooftop tent, CVT, got to keep props ups. I mean, I love CVT. Maybe one day I'll try something different. But the convenience of being able to sleep just flat on a pad that's about, what, two, three inches thick. I mean, away from elements, close up all the windows. Crank the heater on, and I, like I said, I keep it simply on the lowest setting, which is like 1.6 hertz or whatever. 16, 17 degrees maybe. A zero degree bag, obviously. In case heater goes bad, you still can stay warm. But with the heater, I mean, I'm able to sleep just very comfortably without having to worry about, you know, getting cold, getting hot, whatever. And the one beautiful thing about this, I don't know if anybody uses this trick as well. I haven't seen anybody do it, but I'll give it out as my own right now because I'm the only one who have done it before. That I've seen anyway, so you take that extended hose and you throw it inside your sleeping bag long ways before you go to bed. Because I crank this guy up probably about an hour before I go to bed just to kind of heat things up. And for about an hour that that hose draws hot air through the sleeping bag, sleeping bag warms up nicely. So when you get in here, it's warm and the bag is warm. So there's the story of that. All right, time to make some breakfast. And we'll be heading home. Cheers. Stay tuned. Comment, question below. Thank you, guys.